Hello, 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 hello again. It is so wonderful to be with you again, my dear friends from the Bronx Community College Early Childhood Center. Oh, I hope you are well. I hope you're staying safe and happy and you're washing your hands and wearing your masks when you go outside. My name is Mr. Andy, as you know. And, as we said last week, I am going to be your puppet teacher this school year. Ooh, puppets! Ooh, ooh puppets, puppets, puppets! Ooh, ooh. Just like we spoke about last week, we are going to meet many times during the school year. I can't wait. We're going to do so many cool things during our time together. We are going to learn and discover new books that I love and maybe that you love or maybe that your teacher loves. So if you have a book that you want to discover or you want me to read and bring to life with puppetry that you will then make a puppet out of something in that book, you should send me the name. Tell your teacher at Bronx Community College Early Childhood Center, tell them the name of the book and then they'll tell me. And that goes for teachers too. You send me your ideas. I love when you send me ideas. This is a creative process together. We are collaborating as a awesome, amazing group of artists and creative people. Ouch, that's so cool. So the most wonderful part about our time together is that we are gonna make some really fun puppets together, just like we did last week. Can you remember what did we make last week in class? Oh yes, that's right, we made monster puppets. That's so amazing. I hope you still have your amazing puppets that you made and please feel free to share those puppets with me. I'd love to see them. Again, have your teacher take a picture of it or a parent or a grown up take a picture of it and then just send it to me. You can give it to your teacher and they can send it to me as well. Awesome. Now, before we go and start our lesson for this week, we're going to do a warm up together. We are going to do this warm up every time we meet. It will be so nice for us to get ready for our lesson and help us prepare and help us focus and help us warm up so we can do some puppetry. Okay, let's begin by all taking a deep breath together. Ready? And then let it out. Feels so good. I wonder why we do this. Can you tell me why don't we take a big deep breath together? Big deep breath? A big deep breath together. Yeah. So we can all focus and relax together and get ready to, to work really well together. And it makes us feel like we're a group. Even though we're not seeing each other in person right now, it just will help us get together. So let's take another big deep breath. You can breathe through your nose like this. <sighs> You can close your eyes and then breathe out. Good job, let's do it again. Ready, one more time. And out. Wow, yeah. Just close your eyes for a second and listen to the sounds around you. Oh, I hear my wife talking on the phone in the other room. She's working. <laughs> Can you hear the cars driving by outside on the street? What do you hear? What can you hear? Whoa, I just heard a train. Oh, okay, one more big deep breath. I said one more earlier, but let's do one last one. Ready? And out. And if you have your eyes closed, you can open them now. Hey, bye. Awesome. Now let's all stretch really high up in the air. Oh, 
if you're sitting down, you can stretch your arms really high in the air. You can stretch them to the side. If you're standing up, you can stretch your arms really high up into the air and then down to the side. Oh, this feels so good. I like to lean back in my chair. Oh, feels good. You can see my the bottom of my chin. <laughs> now bring your arms together and twirl your wrists, your hands. Good job. Keep twirling. Now let's go the other way. Good job. All right, now, like last week, we made hand puppets. Do you remember which puppets we made? Didn't we make oh, the spider? Let's all make a spider. And then, can you make it go on your hand? Ooh. I'm not a big fan of spiders. Are you a big fan of spiders? Make your spider. That's some creepy truck sounds out there. It kind of sounds kind of scary. All right, make your... Make your spider crawl up to your elbow. Oh, then you can make it crawl to your shoulder. Ah, and then make it crawl up your head. Ah, then make it crawl up your hair. Ah, and then boom. Let's do one more. What else do we do? Oh, we made the dog last week, didn't we? Let's try. Oh, let's try the bunny. I like the bunny because you can make it disappear on its little home. Make it make it go down in its hole. So to do the bunny, you take your hand like this. Everybody go like this. Good job. Now, make the number two. So you have one, two, three. Nope, go to two. And look, it looks like a little bunny. There's its ears. There's its little nose and its teeth. And now can you hop your bunny? I'm going to move my bunny back a little bit. Can you hop your bunny? Across your, I guess for me it's my screen. It could be your table at home. Can you hop your bunny? Hop your bunny toward me. Ready? Here we go. Do, 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 do. I'm going to hop mine toward you. Do, do, do. Toward you. <laughs> and wiggle its ears. De -de 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 I have a marker on my finger. Ooh, it has one color on its ear, and the other one is plain. Do, 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 do. Good. Now watch this. You can make it disappear. Where did it go? Where did it go? Oh, there it is. It's in its hole. Come out, bunny. Oh, it's scared. Try again. Come on out. Oh, he's very shy. Oh. One more time. Look around. It came. This bunny came out of its hole and it's looking around. Oh, it's got scared. <laughs> okay, now let's get on with our really crazy fun lesson. Whoa, what is that? Do you hear that? Listen. Wow, what is that sound? Yes, yes, that is the sound of the wind blowing through the trees. Let's all blow through the trees. Let's act like the wind. Good job. That sound means that it is getting colder. Oh no, the weather is starting to get colder in New York City. And oh, that means, what season is it? Yes, it's fall. It's fall. That is my favorite season. Do you like fall? Do you? No, no. Somebody said summer. Winter? Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Spring? Oh, that's a good one. Well, fall. I like fall. What If you like fall, what makes fall so special? Yes, the temperature gets colder. That's right. Yes, you can open your window and let the cool air come in. You can turn off those annoying air conditioners and just open the windows and let the fresh air come in. I love it. Oh, wait, did somebody say that again? Yes. That's right, the leaves on the trees start to change colors. That is so great, great work, yeah. Oh, you know what, I have some, let me show you some leaves here. Sometimes, well, actually during the spring and the summer, usually leaves turn, or grow green, right? And then they start to change. Maybe they'll change, this one's a little crumply, crinkly, but maybe they'll change into 
yellow, that's right. Or maybe they'll change into red. Ooh, I like that one, that one's cool. It's kind of yellow and red together, isn't it? Isn't that cool? Wow, yeah. So the leaves start to change color and then they fall. They all fall to the ground <laughs> like that. Good job, yeah. Now, I'm gonna read you one of my favorite books that I like to read, my classes in the fall. It's called, it's called Fall Leaves Fall. And I love this book because it's full of great pictures of leaves that have turned from green. Look at those leaves right there. They've turned to yellow. Ooh, some of them are brown. Look at that beautiful brown. And there's always some kids playing. Oh, there's a squirrel. Ooh, yeah. So I love this book because it has so many great pictures and it talks about why the leaves fall during the fall. I'm gonna read you this book. Are you ready? Here we go. Okay, my friends, let's read this amazing book called Fall Leaves Fall. Look at the puppy dog. Hello. Look at all the leaves. Here we go. Fall Leaves Fall by Zoe Hall. Look at these. What are those? Somebody's book. I think I borrowed this from the Bronx Community College Early Childhood Center. Somebody's name. All right. Wow, look at these leaves. They're nice and green. There's a brown one. All year long, my brother and I wait for our favorite season to come. Can you guess what it is? Yes, fall. How do we know when fall is coming? A big bus is passing by my apartment. Do you hear that? So how do we know when fall is coming? <gasps> yeah, we watch the leaves in the summer. The leaves on the trees are green. Oh, look at this bird. <gasps> Maybe we should make a bird puppet next week. And the dog. <gasps> a ladybug, another bus. It's a busy day. When the leaves change colors, we know fall is here. So the leaves are changing from green to yellow. Whoa, another big squirrel. My dog loves squirrels. This dog doesn't seem to be looking at the squirrel so much. Look at all the fall colors. Leaves turn red and orange. There's a little orange right there and yellow. There's some brown too. What are those? What are those called? Yes, acorns. When the wind blows. Can you guys do that with me? Leaves start to fall from the trees. Look at all the leaves blowing and falling. We like to stomp on the leaves. Crunch. Can you guys say crunch, crunch? We like to we like to kick the leaves too. All the fall colors fly back into the air. Yep, see they're kicking. And then they fly in the air. We like to collect leaves. Collect means they like to gather them and keep them. Some leaves are very small and some leaves are big. All right, see, look at this little guy over here. He's looking for leaves. Some leaves have pointy edges. Look at those points. Some leaves have smooth edges. Smooth means that they're not pointy like this. They're smooth, so they're not sharp. Good job. When the leaves cover the ground, it's time to rake them. Why do you think we rake the leaves? Anyone? Yeah, so we can clean up the yard. So when the leaves are get on the ground, if they turn old and 
brown, they could kill the grass. We don't want that to happen. So we have to rake them up. All right. At last, we have made a huge pile. Look at this big pile of leaves. They're so happy. Yeah. Next, we jump. Woo! Look at this kid jumping into the leaves. Nice work. <gasps> what? Is he eating a leaf? What's going on here? Hold on. Oh, let's find out. Inside, oh, we drink mugs of warm cider and eat lots of cookies. Oh, so these leaves are actually cookies. Oh, phew. I thought this guy was eating leaves. That would not be very tasty. Good job. Do you know what cider is? Did somebody say? Yes. Cider is made from apples. It's like apple juice, like orange. Orange juice is made from oranges and cranberry juice is made from cranberries. Well, cider is made from apples. <laughs> it's like apple juice. It's just like not as uh, clear for some reason. I wonder why. Oh, wait a second. Mr. Andy lost his train of thought. Look at all these different types of leaves. You know what always impresses me about the Bronx Community College is that your teachers, they always teach you the kinds or types of leaves on trees and you know so much about it. So these leaves came from these guys' favorite trees. This one right here is a maple, that's right. Do you know what this one is? Yes, I love that name, a ginkgo. Oh, this is what I call my niece. Her name is Cassidy and I call her Sassafras. Sassafras, that's a Sassafras leaf. <gasps> What's this one? Oh, it's got pointy edges and it is an oak tree. This one has smooth edges, but guess what? Oh, it's an oak tree too. It's an oak leaf. They look like they're similar in a way. And just this one has smooth edges. What's that? A beech tree. That's right. You know what? My school growing up was called beech wood. Beech wood. Wow. Interesting fact about Mr. Andy. And oh, look what? These guys took leaves and made animals like our baby fox. Look, that's so cool. It's like it could just fit right in there. My baby fox. This kid said we make pictures with our leaves. I love that idea. Wow. Ooh. Before long, the leaves have turned brown and the branches are bare. What do you think bare means? Yeah, it means they're empty, so there's no more leaves on the trees anymore because they've all fallen. All the fall colors are gone, but we know they will be back next year. Oh, look at this. Look at this. this is very looks very scientific. How leaves grow through the year. This is number one. Look at this little leaf. In spring, small buds on tree branches open and tiny light green leaves appear. Look at these little things, these little buds. And little green leaves appear. They grow bigger every day. Number two, by summer, the leaves have grown to full size and are deep green, but the leaves use sunlight to make food for the tree. Oh, so these guys are gathering the sunlight to feed the tree. Number three, in fall, the green color fades and bright fall colors appear like this red right here. The leaf stems weaken. I'm weak. It means they don't get very strong. They turn weak like they, they can't hold themselves anymore. And the leaves fall off the branches. In winter, all the leaves have fallen off. The tree makes buds. There's the buds, which will grow new leaves in the spring. You know, I never knew that the buds on a tree grow during the winter. That is incredible. So they're gonna grow buds in the winter which will become new leaves in the spring. Some leaves such as needles on pine trees. Do you know what a pine tree is? Yeah, it has pine cones and they're really sharp. Dee -dee -doo 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 -doo. They, and they smell really good. They do not change color. So these needles don't change color and they do not fall off in the fall. Which fall colors do you see where you live? Can you look out? Do you have trees outside your window? Yeah? Do you see red and orange and yellow and green? Good job, my friends. Yay! 
wonderful work. All right, let's let's see what kind of fun we can do now. All right, I'll be right back. Yeah. Ooh, good job, my friends. Yes, thank you for listening so well. That was awesome. I love that book. Um, now today, thank you, thank you for listening. Woohoo! Yes, good job, my friends. Thank you for being so amazing and listening to me read that really awesome book to you. That was great. Now, I was thinking about what type of puppet I could show you this week, and I wanted to make a puppet out of all these leaves that are outside on the ground. What? So, I found a tree that looks like this. Yeah, look at that tree. It's all red and beautiful, and it has such beautiful red leaves in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't that great? And then I went on a little excur... And then I went out and I... And then I tried to find the most perfect leaf that I could use to make my puppet out of. You want to see? Ready? Here we go. Oh, here's one. Yes, I found these really awesome red leaves like this. I just thought they were so cool. And I was looking at them I'm like, what kind of puppet could I make from a red leaf? And I was like, hmm, it kind of looks a little bit like a dog or a, I was like, or I, I don't know. I saw a dog. I saw a nose here. I saw maybe it's eyes and these were it's, its ears or it's like, I don't know, cheeks like this, like my beard, like a little cheeks. And then maybe these could be the ears. So then I started to think about it and I was like, I love that it has this little stem on it like that and I can hold it at the screen. So I started to just make little pieces of like eyes and noses and ears and I played around and look what I made. Are you ready? I'm gonna try to bring him in or her in. I made a baby red fox out of my leaf. I forgot to ask you, can anybody tell me what kind of leaf this is? Did somebody say a maple leaf? Yes, it's a maple leaf from a maple tree. That's what kind of tree that was in that picture that I showed you of that tree I found. You guys are so smart. I'm so glad to be your teacher. You teach me things. That's so great. So this is a red fox made from a red maple leaf. Did somebody say, did I, wait, did I just hear that somebody has never heard of a red fox? Is that true? You wanna see a picture and a video of a red fox? I can do that, here we go. Let's see if I can find a video. Hmm. is a red fox. I love it. Now, my red fox, again, he's just made of a red leaf ooh, that I found on the ground outside. And then I just used some paper. I just got some white paper like this, like from my printer, or you can use any type of paper. You can even use a cereal box, like the inside of it, or you can use a piece of cardboard or anything that you have. But I just got a couple pieces of paper. So I just got a leaf for its head. And I like to get the leaf with the, the stem on it so I can do go like this on my camera for you guys. Hello, my name's a red fox, I'm a red fox. So I uh, just got a leaf. I got some paper again. I used a, I used a black marker. This one might be better because it's washable. I got a black marker. I got a glue stick. And then I just grabbed my, here they are, my scissors. That's all I used for my lesson. 
And that's all you need to make a red fox out of a leaf. But the hard part is that you're gonna have to go search for a leaf outside. So you know what? You should probably put your mask on like this. Hey, got my mask on. So put your mask on and go with your grown up outside. Look at my mouth. <laughs> go. <laughs> my glasses are fogging up for you. <sighs> now, put your mask on. Go with your grown up. Go to the park in your neighborhood. Or maybe you have some trees that are on your street. Make sure you're with your grown up and make sure you put your mask on to stay safe. Go get a leaf. Grab those materials, and I'll meet you in the puppet making station. All right, here we go. Okay, my friends. Now, in order to make your little red fox puppet, you're gonna need a red leaf. Now, I thought I would make a mommy red fox to go along with my baby red fox. So I got a bigger leaf. So hopefully I can make a mommy red fox for my little baby red fox. So I got a big one here. Okay, and it's always good to get the one with a stem on it. Get a leaf with a stem so you can hold it and you can make it walk. Cool, now you're gonna need a piece of paper. Again, white paper works really well so you can color it. Or if you don't have white paper, you can use any color paper, really, as long as you can color it, because we're gonna make eyes and ears and a nose with this paper. You're gonna need a glue stick to glue your nose and your eyes and your ears onto your leaf. You're gonna need your scissors to cut, and you might need a grown-up to help you cut, but that's okay. Just ask nicely, and I'm sure they'll help you. And then you're gonna need a black marker like this one to draw the eyes, the nose, and the ears. One more thing. Now, if you can't find a red leaf, that's okay. You can use any color if you want. I have a green one here. I would love to see a green fox. If you guys have never seen a green fox in my life, and I don't even think they make green foxes, they, someone, doesn't make green foxes. But if you find a green fox, and a green leaf, and you want to make a green fox, Go ahead, make a green fox. I'm gonna make a red fox. All right, here's what we need to do. First, dun, 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 dun. take your paper and fold it in half. You may be asking, why Mr. Andy, are you folding your paper in half? I'll tell you why, my friends. Because I am going to make ears and eyes for my puppet. And I want my ears and my eyes to be exactly the same shape our same size. So I fold it in half. So when I cut my paper, it makes two of the exact same size. So let's figure out how we're gonna make these eyes and ears. Let's start with the ears. I'm gonna put my mama fox's head on top of my paper like this. And I'm gonna draw my ears. See how my baby fox's ears come up here? I'm gonna draw my, my, my mama fox ears up on a point like that. See what I did? I just drew one like that. See where, how you can see where those ears are? Like that, right there on top of her head. And then I'm just gonna make a round part of the bottom so I can glue it on the back. You see what I did? Now here comes the magic. Take your scissors and see how you're folded. Keep the paper folded and cut around your mama fox ear. So you're cutting through two pieces of paper. Oh boy. You're gonna see why in a second. Ready? So I cut, ooh, those are really pointy. I might cut those points off just to make them less pointy. So look, I cut this out and look, I have two ears. Whoa! So look. And I flip that one around so they're pointy on there. And then I'm gonna color them black. But look, I made two mama fox ears. Yay! Now, pardon me while I pull my chair in, I'm just gonna color them black like this. My black marker seems to be running out of ink, but that's okay. I kind of like it a little, a little uh, faded. It looks cool. There we go. You can color your ear now. 
Did you see that? And then you can color the other ear like this. Good job. And there we go. So you can put your fox head, your mama fox head or your baby fox head like that. There's my baby, or I'm sorry, my mama fox ears. Now what? <gasps> yes, we need eyes. Now check out my baby fox. I mean, these little, little white circles inside of its eyes. So it looked like there was like a reflection. It kind of looks really cute. You don't have to do that, but I'm gonna show you how, okay? So let's make some eyes. Grab your paper again, keep it folded in half. And I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make an oval. <laughs> I'm gonna make an oval. It looks like an egg or an oval, right? You can also make a round circle if you want. You can even make like, I don't know, those look like almonds. They're kind of pointy, but I'm gonna do an oval. Now, keep your paper folded in half. And guess what? That's right, just like you did for the ear. You're gonna cut your eyeball out like this. I should say you cut your paper eyeball out with your scissors. Yes, so now you have two pretty much same size and shape eyeballs. All right, let's draw our little eyeballs now. This is kind of difficult, so I'm gonna show you how to do it. So watch closely. Grown-ups and teachers, you might wanna to help too, but watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna draw a little circle down here in the bottom like this. See that? Guess what? I'm not gonna color that white little circle in. I'm gonna keep it like that because that's gonna be like the little reflection or pupil inside my fox eye, my fox's eye. Now, I'm gonna just color. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna draw a black line. Since this is the older fox, I'm gonna draw a black line around the eyeball. Can you see that like this? So it's outlined like the other one. Ooh, they look almost exactly the same. Now, do you see my baby fox? I just sort of left that top part white. Does it look like it's got its eyeball in there or its pupil? So I'm gonna just take a line. I'm gonna draw like that and I'm gonna draw like that. It kind of gives the fox personality too. It makes it look kind of sweet or very nice. Now I'm gonna just color in, but don't color that little circle in. So color the rest in black. And then when you're finished coloring all your pieces, you just have to glue the eyes, the ears, and the nose onto your leaf. And you will have a fox puppet. As you can see, here's my baby fox and her mama fox. You guys, that was so awesome. You guys did such a great job. Let me see. I'm gonna show you my did so great i would love to see your red fox puppet so if your teacher wants to take a picture and then email it to me or text it to me i would love to see them all right now my friends i want to tell you to study hard work hard be amazing like you are and be safe be happy be well all right, I'll see you soon, okay? <gasps>